Let's examine what doesn't align with the use of a liquid material. A liquid geopolymer would inevitably seep into gaps. Flexible formwork could be used to prevent this, fabric, polyethylene, or other materials. But this would not stop the overflow of one block onto another. Additionally, the pressure exerted by a liquid mixture can tear through inch-thick boards, let alone weaker materials. Liquid mixtures also shrink as they solidify, which, in large volumes, could lead to cracking. Without the use of vibration, voids would remain. And applying pure slurry, without aggregate such as gravel or stones is a pointless solution. This would significantly reduce the strength and result in unjustified labor costs. There is no gravel in the blocks. This is evident from the fractures. Nor are there the inevitable prints on concrete, left by not only the builders but also animals, which, as we know, love to leave their marks at construction sites. It's also difficult to explain the bedding joints on the blocks. If these were the result of depressions, there would be deformation at the edges. Since there's no deformation, the next row must have been cast atop already hardened blocks. But then, where did the indentations come from? Were they deliberately made on hardened concrete? That would mean working with a weakly solidified material. Straight joint lines also require explanation. When pouring into molds, the result would be bulging, uneven lines, which would then need to be leveled. But again, this would involve working with solid material. The back sides of the blocks also need explanation. These often resemble rough natural stone. Any type of formwork would inevitably smooth the shape, and rounded forms like these cannot be achieved by simply backfilling with soil. 